Hello and for person, this is Anton, and today I wanted to discuss a somewhat challenging topic to cover in a single video, so it's probably going to have several parts. And the topic is, I guess here on the screen, bacteria. But actually not just any bacteria. Bacteria and a lot of other microbes living inside of us, our gut microbiota or gut flora. Different microbes living inside of us and helping us to do quite a lot of different things. Because by studying these microbes, we can actually learn to understand ourselves better and we can try to answer the question of who exactly are we? Who are you? Who am I? Well, I guess I'm Anton and you're the wonderful person, but that's not really what I'm asking. I'm asking who exactly are we in terms of the actual cells in us? Because as we study these microbes, we realize that they play a huge part in our lives. They technically create us as well. And you might have heard the expression, you are what you eat. Well, today you're going to find out that not only is it actually correct, but in reality it goes way, way beyond that. The microbes inside of us are us, and we are sort of them. And so this whole concept is a little bit metaphysical, but kind of exciting as well. See, she's excited, and you're going to be excited after you learn all of this as well. Because one way of looking at our relationship with our bacteria inside our guts is to actually consider ourselves as a kind of a generation ship, basically a spaceship traveling through space for many, many, many years. And inside of the ship, there are inhabitants, there are different astronauts doing all sorts of work in order to maintain the ship itself. Now, replace the ship with yourself and replace the astronauts with the bacteria and a lot of other microbes living inside of us. And that's the kind of a relationship that we have going between us. You can't really have one without the other, and both are directly responsible for protecting and guiding one another. But let's start with the basics and with the baby steps. So for many decades now, the scientists were aware of so-called gut-brain communication, the direct communication between the brain and the small brain inside our guts. Both of them seems to have an influence on one another, with the gut actually sometimes having more influence on the main brain. And the gut itself also serves as the home to a lot of different microbes. Here we're talking about different bacteria, different types of ancient bacteria known as archaea, and even certain types of fungi, mushrooms. For example, this fungus right here known as Candida albicans is a pretty common fungus to be found in our guts. And though a lot of them do cause certain issues, a lot of them also probably play some kind of a role we still don't understand. And this is obviously not just true for humans. Many different species, even insects, have a lot of different bacteria living inside of them, helping them to some extent. But it's really in the last decade or so that we started to discover how incredible these bacteria and these microbes are in terms of providing a lot of functionality. For example, we know that they definitely protect us against different pathogens that would otherwise invade our system pretty easily. They also tend to protect us from various environmental toxins. Just like the colonists on that ship, they are also responsible for maintaining and repairing a lot of different things inside our guts. They are also responsible for providing a lot of support in terms of metabolism. They tend to digest a lot of things that would be indigestible otherwise. And because of this, about 60% of the waste that we produce, or basically our poop, is essentially dead microbes. Microbes that digested stuff that would not be digestible otherwise. But more recently, the scientists have also started to realize that they also play a huge role in various types of human immunity, and also seem to directly influence a lot of things in our brain, including, as you can see from this image, affecting sleep quality. And when it comes down to it, our guts essentially represent the highest microbial density of anything anywhere on the planet. There are approximately 300 to maybe even a thousand different species living in us, with a lot of them still being discovered and a lot of them not really being understood at all. And what's even crazier, and that's actually why I wanted to start with this whole spaceship analogy, is that in terms of genetic representation, if you were to combine all of the genes from all of these bacteria, they would actually have approximately 100 times as many genes in total as there are in human genome. So genetically speaking, it's actually not wrong to assume that we are basically these generation ships for these microbial colonists. Their genes seem to be way, way more important and way more numerous than our own genes. And they're also obviously extremely ancient. Many of them seem to have existed on the planet for billions of years and only have adopted to live inside of us, possibly within the last few millions of years or so. But I guess what's less intuitive is that many of us, and actually all of us, have very likely different types of bacteria and microbes living inside of us. As a matter of fact, at least one study was able to discover that different cities seem to produce different types of microbes 
inside the people living in those cities. So there's actually a kind of a footprint or bacterial footprint depending on where you live. And the composition of bacteria inside of us has actually changed quite dramatically over time as well, especially as the diet changed and as we enter the industrial age. And this is a super important part because a lot of the modern sicknesses and diseases that humans tend to have are actually the result of either lack of or excess of, of certain bacteria in our guts. And all this is a result of the Industrial Revolution to some extent. For example, this study right here that was released last year was able to analyze some of the oldest microbes discovered in some of the ancient poop around the planet, analyzing the diversity of different microbes as far back as 2000 years. And specifically looking at the genomes of bacteria that used to live on the planet, in the process discovering that some of these bacteria that used to be in us were completely new to science. In other words, they were no longer around. They seem to have disappeared for one reason or another. Whereas the modern microbiome contained a lot of different antibiotic resistant microbes, but overall had much lower diversity of microbes as well. So basically we had fewer bacteria and many of them were quite resistant to antibiotics. At the same time, discovering that there is a direct link between certain types of bacteria in our bodies, in our guts, and certain problems like, for example, diabetes or obesity. In other words, these little guys living inside of us seem to directly affect our health and seem to keep our bodies healthy, which seemed to be very prevalent in ancient humans, the humans that used to eat a very diverse and very different diet compared to today. But interestingly, the bacteria of these ancient humans were somewhat similar to the bacteria of various native communities around the planet, although those unknown bacteria were still missing even from the modern humans living in various communities. And so the assumption here was that as we moved closer and closer to the so-called grocery store diet, we lost a lot of different nutrients that used to support those bacteria that very likely played an important role in protecting our bodies. For example, the degradation of various types of mucus in the colon is often associated with problems like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or ulcerative colitis. All this bacterial in nature, and all this very likely connected to the modern diet. None of this was a problem back in the days. On top of this, some of these ancient microbes also had much higher numbers of so-called transposases, a type of an enzyme that usually is responsible for replicating elements of DNA or essentially helping various bacteria adapt to changing conditions. And so in other words, because of the ease of access of various nutrients in modern diet, a lot of the bacteria now has sort of become a little bit lazy and became less efficient in adapting to new environments. Something that's expected because of the way that modern diet works and because we generally tend to eat the same thing over and over pretty much every week. Now this is not the case for some of the ancient communities and some of the modern native communities where the diet changes pretty much every day. Or at least in more agricultural based communities where basically you eat what you grow. Now that's of course one of the main discoveries. But there were some other discoveries that were much more surprising. Specifically based on various studies involving mice. And in this case by studying the gut bacteria inside mice the scientists actually discovered something really interesting. By doing what's known as the feces transplantation, or essentially taking feces from one mouse and putting them into the other mouse, something that's done in medicine already, they were able to successfully reverse aging and problems related to aging in different older mice. And more specifically, they were able to reverse a lot of the cognitive decline and a lot of cognitive problems associated with being old. Once again confirming that the healthy microbiome seems to directly support not just the digestive health or the immune system, but also support the function of the brain as well. And that's of course a super important discovery because even though it's extremely difficult for us to change our DNA or to somehow reverse aging by, for example, changing things inside our body, in this particular case, this study suggests that by transplanting microbiome from the younger individual into the older individual, it might become possible to actually improve the health of a certain individual. Going as far as discovering that even their brains seem to have repaired just a little bit, which did improve cognitive function in these older mice. With at least one bacteria, this one here known as Enterococcus, very likely being responsible for a lot of this because it's known to be quite abundant in the younger mice and seems to be absent in some of the older mice. But just the fact that it actually seems to have changed the brains of these mice is already a huge discovery. 
And because in humans, something similar is already used to treat conditions such as different allergies or, for example, irritable bowel syndrome, it's probably not long before the doctors potentially start using the poop transplant from younger donors to reintroduce healthy bacteria into someone's gut and to then help them improve health that way. And all of this goes along with some of the other studies that have recently also discovered that whatever is happening inside our guts is directly affecting our brains and potentially even changing our personalities. And so this so-called gut-brain axis is extremely potent in affecting everything about us. A lot of the chemical signals that are generated inside our guts affect our brains and many of these signals will generally be produced through the activity of various bacteria. And going back to mice again, one of the experiments used various types of transplants from people with what's known as the Major Depressive Disorder, MDD. And when these samples were transplanted into mice, mice have also developed somewhat similar and unusual symptoms. A lot more anxiety, a lot more depression. And so going back to that girl with the pizza, you are what you eat after all. But it seems to go much, much further than that. It seems to be way more potent than we ever thought. You're not just what you eat, the bacteria inside of you actually define who you become and how you feel. Not to mention that it's also connected to the quality of the sleep you get, it's also directly connected to various anxiety disorders, and it also seems to be connected to a lot of depression and other mood disorders that we're still trying to learn about. And since the microbial composition inside of us tends to change depending on the time of the day, it also means that our guts are exposed to different types of metabolites produced by different microbes during different times of the day. Making all of this connected to your sleep quality and, of course, the idea behind the circadian rhythm. And there also seems to be a connection between different types of personality traits and specific microbes living inside of us as well. Certain microbes tend to produce certain personalities. Something that was discussed in this study that was released only a few months ago. With the principle being relatively simple, certain bacteria will leave behind certain metabolites or certain types of chemicals that can then generally influence the so-called brain-gut axes, producing certain signals that would not be produced otherwise. With each type of the bacterium being associated with a very specific personality trait. Which implies that depending on what you eat, you're going to be encouraging the growth of certain types of bacteria, which in essence changes your personality with time. None of this is going to be instant, and it's going to depend on the balance inside your microbiome, but all of this seems to be correlated. Which takes me back to that original point. You are what you eat to a much bigger extent than we ever thought. It seems to affect your personality, it seems to affect your cognitive state, and it probably has a lot of other effects as well. The gut microbes seem to directly affect who we become with time. But that's of course just preliminary findings from just some of the studies in the last few years. There are still so many unanswered questions. For example, what effects would the microbiotic have if it suddenly ends up eliminating most of the bacteria responsible for certain personality traits? On the other hand, what about dramatically changing your diet? How quickly will the personality and everything else change afterwards? And so obviously all this is still in its infancy and there are so many new things to learn about ourselves and about our little passengers, the microbes. But then again, there is still that question that I cannot answer. Who are we? Who are you? Who am I? Are we basically just these generation ships controlled by the bacteria who seem to be extremely efficient at living inside of us and represent some of the richest microbiomes in the world? Or did the bacteria basically occupy us without asking and have become permanent residents even though we never really wanted them to be there? So lots of questions, not enough answers, but that means that more parts to this particular topic are going to be showing up sometime in the future on this channel. So subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about biology and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.